everybody. C comedian and actress Costella Alonso was the first Latina to create, produce, and star in her own network sitcom. Costella, she's here with us now. And now she has a new book, Music to My Years, a mixtape memoir of growing up and standing up. So she joins us now. This is a book that's published by Atria, which is an imprint of Simon & Schuster, which is a division of CBS. She is here in the Toyota Greenwood Room. We're so happy to have her here with us. Thank you so much. Welcome to oh CBS. It's so good to be here at CBS. I just, I feel at home right here. Oh, good. It feels <laughs> homey with you here. So we're also here celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Yes. So much of your book is about your culture, your background. Growing up, first-generation American on a border town, named San Juan, which led to some confusion yes, for you when yes. you were growing up because yeah. you thought you were Puerto Rican? I thought I was. Well, you know, <laughs> and I, and people ask me, why did you think you were Puerto Rican? And I'm like, well, because when you're a kid, you don't say the state that you're from. Like, I didn't, right. like, when people ask me, I'm not saying, oh, I'm from San Juan, Texas. I don't know. People, we don't talk in right. states. Right. So then I would hear San Juan, you know, on TV, in movies, and they were, like, my color. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God, I'm Puerto Rican. Right. And then, like... One day, my mom's like, "No, like you're like you're you're Texan." And it's funny because even in Texas, we love being from Texas. Right. But even the flags were kind of similar to me. That's yeah. When I was Same a kid, so I'm right. like, yeah, you know, I'm like, you got to go with me. It's kind of similar, right? An existential identity crisis right. at a young age. Yes. So, since it's Hispanic Heritage Month, you know, what is it? What do you want to share with people about being Hispanic? About what you love about being you know, Mexican American, Texan. It's a very simple thing, actually. I want to remind people that uh, I'm just like everybody else. And I think that's such a hard reminder to do mm -hmm. at certain times because uh, everybody wants, when they, when they ask me a question, a lot of times they want to hear the Latino version mm -hmm. of an answer. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, how about I just give you an answer? Right. And if you were to write it out, and show it to people, you wouldn't guess that a Latina said it. Mm -hmm. You know, so how about treating my life like everybody else's life? We, um, that's why actually I formatted the book with music. Right. Because for me, music is such an equalizer. Uh, everyone has songs that we love. Right. For different reasons. It's weird how uh, if we break up with someone, we listen to love songs, even though we don't have that like love. Adele, someone like yeah, you, right? Oh my, <laughs> you're like you're grabbing the pillow, you're like, why? Like, you know? And, yeah. and for some reason, it makes you feel good yeah. to feel bad. Right. But you also have those songs that remind you of great things that have happened in your life. And for me, I wanted to use music because I love music. I listen to hours of it every day. But there's songs in there that you wouldn't assume that I like. Yeah. Because everybody makes assumptions of what you might right. like based on what you look like. Right. There's a lot of classic rock in here. So what I love about you, what you do is you organize each chapter based on a song that yes. like represents that moment in your life. And this is really a love letter to the 80s and 90s. Yes. Growing up first generation American, no matter where your family's yes. from. Yes. I mean, there was a lot that I identified with, and I'm first generation American. My parents are from the Dominican Republic. And, you know, when you talk about Selena, yes. like being a goddess and dreaming of you was the, yes. the, the, the song for that chapter. Yeah, I, well, you know, and it's so funny because that chapter, uh, Selena spoke to me. I, I feel like uh, Selena Quintanilla, not Gomez. I always have to specify now because I'm like, oh, there's another Selena. But like, who was Selena, named after the original? Exactly, yeah. and it's so like a, phew, mind blown. <laughs> but like, Selena Quintanilla is one of those iconic images where um, people that love her love her, and it's hard to explain to other people that aren't familiar with yeah. her why you love her. And for me, Selena to me was was someone that um, was so ordinary so normal mm -hmm. that she was so extraordinary. It was so, she was so like everyone we knew. She, she actually served as a chance, like a hope for me that I could do something great because she had done something right. great and she was herself. And, you know, so it's, it's hard to explain it, mm -hmm. and that's why I wanted to take the chapter to write it. Well, I think, you know, you talk about representation. You talk about watching a movie, I think, White Nights. Yes, White Nights. And seeing Gregory Hines yes. tap dancing. Yes. And you created tap shoes yeah. of, using what? Like, uh, bottle caps. Yeah. I, I stuck bottle caps at the bottom of my little, like, Dora the Explorer white Velcro sneakers. Right. Yeah. And, and you talk about seeing him. Yes. He wasn't Mexican. No. But that that even was represent, representation for you. Well, you know, it, for me, I grew up in a border town right next to Mexico. So 
uh, in my neighborhood, we didn't have diversity. We were all Mexican-American, Mexican, you know. So we didn't really have a lot of interaction with white people, black people, Asian. Like, it, it was just us. Mm -hmm. So you grew up in a bubble, you know. And for me, I always say that when you're craving to have your story told, you really seek out the connections right. wherever you find it. And for me, when I saw Gregory Hines, I saw someone that wasn't white. And, you know, I was a little kid when I saw it, so I couldn't even understand race, culture. Right. Like, for me, it was just like, this guy looks like me or like my relatives, mm -hmm. and he's do doing something extraordinary that I've never seen before. And that's a lot of, that's a lot of the book. It's talking about how, for me, I am very grateful for the black community, like, uh, like pop, music, TV, film, because for me, that was the closest to representation that I had for a long time, mm -hmm. you know? And for me, it was something that really helped me understand that, that other people had similar struggles, that the communities had different, like, the same ideals, that it wasn't, you know... It's funny how, like, uh, in politics, Latinos get asked about immigration. Right. But we also care about education, right. you know? We also care about the economy, you know? So it's, it was this nice connection where you realize that even if we look different and come from different parts, a lot of us have a lot of things in common, mm -hmm. you know? And Gregory Hines was that thing for me where I'm like, years later, looking back, I don't know. Like, I don't know why it was appealing, but it, you know, but at the same time, I'm thinking, it's because I was really craving someone that kind of looked like me to do something that I didn't know was possible. And you say seeing him tap dance in this movie made you think that you could do the same thing. And you spent hours in front yes. of the TV learning those moves. And had that person been white, you maybe you wouldn't have done that. Yeah, well, you know, it's like Baryshnikov's in the movie, right? right? Baryshnikov, amazing ballet for a dancer. I mean, one of the best. And, you know, for me, I was familiar with the idea of ballet at that point, mm -hmm. because girls at school had been taking ballet classes. Mm -hmm. Tap was different. Ballet was about this beautiful art form that's very graceful. Mm -hmm. And for me, tap, I was such an energetic kid mm -hmm. that the tap, the movements, that was more of like, right. that was more of the beat. Right. Like that was more of right. like what connected with my personality, you know? What did your mom say to you when you asked her to take dance classes? Ah, um, I asked my dad, <laughs> I asked her if I could take dance classes. I didn't even know they were a thing. And my mom, super sarcastic, was like, oh no, pues take, it, take the dance classes and then go tell your brothers that they're not gonna eat because you have to dance. Like, you know, that was it. And I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't dance. Right. You know? Which is why I made the tap shoes. That's when I learned that um, a lot of times we give, we think that the economic status that where we're from mm -hmm. gives us limitations, and sometimes it does. Right. But also, if you really love something, you can find a way to be part of it and to learn about it despite not having money because the knowledge, thankfully, with the internet and everything that we have is more available and uh, technically kind of free. Right. Yeah. I saw your stand-up special, and you're like, okay, guys, for those of you who don't know what an encyclopedia I is, know, it's the internet and books. It's true. <laughs> I mean, it's so weird. Like, It's so weird. I, I'm at that age now where I talk about the technology I grew up with, and then people are like, what is that? Like right. The VCR. You're getting to I, the, know. I know. You get to the point where you even say MySpace, and people are like, what, what is that? Is that like TikTok, <laughs> but quicker? Like, you know, like, and you're just like, oh, my God. Like, MySpace was a thing not too long yeah. ago, but now it's like obsolete, you know? So how do you grapple with the fact that you grew up, you say a lot in the book, a latchkey kid, home yes. alone for hours on end, and, and TV was your first friend, yes. right? Keeping you company. You formed relationships with the, with the four golden girls. You were the fifth yeah. in your mind, right? Yeah. So like now you had your own TV show, Cristela. Yeah. You're providing that representation. You're now in. Pe you were in people's living rooms. Uh, you do this with your stand-up and now your book. How does that feel for you to be providing that comfort, that companionship for kids you know, like you? Uh, I think that uh, when we talk, there's a lot of talk, especially especially right now with Hispanic Heritage Month. We talk about representation being important in TV and film and on screen, but I also say that it's important to do it behind the screen too, yeah. because if we don't have decision makers. That um, that understand the journey. It's hard to actually have a journey to you know to tell. For me, everything I do, 
and it's not for everybody, but my journey has always been to tell my story and give the programming that little me would have loved to have seen. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, you know, my show was canceled four years ago, and people always ask me, why haven't you come back to TV? Why haven't you come back to TV? And I always tell them, I don't have a story to tell yet. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything for money. I want to do it because pop culture was my best friend growing up, and I, I treat it with so much love and so much respect that I only like to tell stories that that speak to me because I think that that's the only way of making sure that it connects with the audiences. Right. So for me, you know, it's like this book, it's incredible to me that I wrote it because I come from a neighborhood where people like me are always told you can't, you know? And when you're told that you can't, there's a lot of people that will just accept it as an answer. But then you got to take the extra step and ask why. And if they don't give you a good answer to why you can't do it, then you realize that that's not a legitimate answer. That's just something that they have been told and they're repeating it for something else. So for me, I love what I do. And this book was very special to me. To me, it's such a love letter for everything that made me understand where I was in this country. I, my Spanish is my first language. I was born in the United States. But also, I think it gives people a chance to understand that if you come from nothing, but you want something, you can get it. And even when you come from nothing, you're absolutely something. So I hope that people read this book and connect with it, because it's, it's just a big thank you to everything that influenced me. It's, you know, the catchphrase from the Golden Girls, thank you for being a friend. <laughs> so that catchphrase got you in trouble, got you in the principal's yes! office. So many stories in this book. Yes. So much to read, so inspiring. Uh, your background, growing up with your family, the family mm -hmm. values, your mother. There's so much here. You guys can all get this today. This is when your book drops today. Yes. Wherever yes. you buy your books, online, in store. Cristela Alonso, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bye, guys.